iOS 26 is the biggest visual overhaul of iOS in more than a decade, and with it comes a ton of new opportunities to customize your iPhone and really make it your own. I already covered some of these customization options in my general iOS 26 overview video. If you haven't watched that yet, I'll link to it in the description. But I also said I'd go into more detail in a dedicated video, and this is that video. Okay, let's get into it. When talking about customization in iOS 26, we have to acknowledge the complete visual redesign that Apple has applied. This is undoubtedly the biggest visual overhaul of iOS in more than a decade. You're going to notice it straight away as soon as you install the new version on your device, and it plays a key part in how your iPhone now looks and feels. Everything is more translucent. There's this liquid glass effect that appears throughout the system in notification center, in control center, on your lock screen. So it's definitely something to keep in mind as you start personalizing your device. Let's start by taking a look at wallpapers. So to do this, we're gonna go into settings, scroll down and choose wallpaper, then press add new wallpaper. You'll see that the menu here has had a bit of a redesign and you'll also notice there's now a dedicated iOS 26 section. If I tap into that, we get access to the new dynamic iOS 26 wallpaper. And you can scroll through different styles like dynamic, shadow, sky, halo, and dusk. I personally prefer dynamic, but of course you can pick whatever suits your style. If I press cancel to go back to the add new wallpaper screen, you'll also notice an option labeled photo with a little 3D icon next to it. These are spatial scenes tapping into this takes you to a screen where your phone will recommend an image that it thinks could work well as a spatial scene. This feature essentially deconstructs the photo into layers and then rebuilds it as a 3D scene that shifts subtly as you tilt your phone. It's a really clever effect and it works surprisingly well. Your phone will give you a suggestion to start with, but you can tap the photo button, then choose photo and see if there's something in your library that works even better. Once selected, your phone will automatically generate the spatial scene and you'll notice a toggle for it just to the left of the ellipsis menu. So you can turn the effect on or off if needed. This is definitely gonna work better with some images than others. So it is worth experimenting a bit. Beyond that, the usual wallpaper categories are still here. Photos, emoji, color, astronomy and weather. So you should have no trouble finding something that fits your style. By the way, do you ever find yourself watching tips and tricks videos like this and thinking, how am I supposed to remember all of this? If that sounds like you, you should definitely check out iPhone Essentials Plus. It's my dedicated training portal for the iPhone. More than 150 lessons with more content on the way. It's broken down into modules with each one covering a different part of your iPhone. Inside each module, you'll find lessons and every lesson comes with a short video showing you exactly what to do, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots, and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. You can go through everything at your own pace or just use the search tool to jump straight to the thing that you're trying to figure out. There are no ads, no sponsors, just content. And it's all available for a single price, no ongoing subscription. And that one-time purchase also includes all future updates. And if you've got a Mac, I've recently launched Mac Essentials Plus as well. It works exactly the same way, just for your Mac instead. You can buy either one on its own, or you can bundle the two together for the best possible price. If this sounds good to you, scan the QR code that you can see on screen, or check the link in the description or the pinned comment. Another new change that Apple has added in iOS 26 is the ability to change both the look and the size of the clock on your lock screen. So if I tap customize on a wallpaper, this one happens to be a spatial scene, but it works the same on any wallpaper, you'll now see a little drag bar next to the clock. You can use this to resize the clock anywhere from the default size all the way up to almost halfway down the screen. There's a fair bit of flexibility here, depending on how prominent you want that clock to be. Now, one thing worth knowing is that this only works with the default font. If you tap into the clock and choose a different font style, that resizing bar disappears. I'm not sure if that's something that Apple plans to change in a future update, but at the moment, if you want the larger clock, you'll need to stick with the default font. While we're on the subject of customization, if you tap into the clock again, you'll notice that we still have the same options as before for changing the font and color, but there's now an extra layer to this. When picking a color, you'll see a new toggle at the top that lets you choose between solid and glass. Solid is exactly what it sounds like. It's a flat color, but if you choose glass, it gives the clock a slightly embossed, translucent look that ties in with the new liquid glass design language in iOS 26. 
You can then use the slider underneath to control the intensity of the effect, so you can go for something bold or dial it back for a more subtle appearance. Once you're happy with your setup, just tap out and hit done in the top right corner and your changes will be saved. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, you should definitely check out the Proper Weekly. It's my free weekly newsletter that lands in your inbox every Friday, packed with tech news from the week, content I've been enjoying, and a handy tip for the Apple ecosystem. Just scan the QR code on screen to sign up, or follow the link in the description. Okay, this next option isn't technically new, but it's still a really important part of personalizing your iPhone, especially now with all the visual updates in iOS 26, so I wanted to include it here. It's the ability to customize the lock screen buttons that you see down at the bottom of your display. This feature actually came in with iOS 18, but I'm still surprised by how many people don't know about it. So when you're in wallpaper edit mode, look down at the bottom of your lock screen and you'll see your shortcut buttons. By default, these will be the torch or flashlight on the left and the camera on the right. You'll notice that they each have a little minus icon next to them. Tap the minus and it'll turn into an empty plus button. Then just tap the plus button and you'll get access to everything that's available in your control center. So you can swap out those buttons for any control that you find useful. One of the better examples here is the new reminder shortcut. You can choose new reminder and then whenever you long press that lock screen button, a reminder field will appear at the top of the screen. That means that you can quickly add a reminder without even unlocking your phone or opening the app. And it isn't just Apple features that you can add in here. Since iOS 18, a number of third-party developers have added support for this. So you'll find tools like ChatGPT, Gemini, and Perplexity available too. That means you can place an AI assistant right on your lock screen for super fast access. You can mix and match whichever tools work best for you. So it's definitely worth diving into this and setting it up to suit the way you use your phone. Okay, so with the lock screen covered, let's talk about the home screen because that's the other area where you'll find some big customization changes in iOS 26. If I go to my home screen and long press, you'll see an edit button up in the top left corner and everything to do with customizing your home screen can now be accessed from here. You've got four main options, add widget, edit wallpaper, edit pages, and customize. If you tap add widget, it opens the familiar widget selection screen. You'll see a bunch of predefined widgets at the top and then all the apps that support widgets listed below. You can tap into any of these to browse the available options. And just like before, if you long press on an app on your home screen and it supports widgets, you'll see widget sizes right at the top of the contextual menu. You can choose from small, medium or large versions and turn that app tile into a widget on the spot. Back to the edit menu, edit wallpaper will take you into the wallpaper editing tool that we've already looked at. And edit pages is the same as tapping the page dots that normally appear near the bottom of the screen. From here, you can remove entire app pages or rearrange them by dragging them into a new order. Then you've got the customize button, which opens the same home screen styling panel from iOS 18, but with a few important additions. The sun icon still lets you toggle the background dimming effect. You've still got small and large app tiles, but instead of the old toggle, it's now a small square and a large square icon. You just tap that to switch between them. Then you've got your color options. You can go with default, light mode, or dark mode. And under dark, there's now an auto setting which switches between light and dark depending on the time of day or an always setting which forces dark mode at all times. Tinted is still here. You've got a color picker and sliders to fine tune the base color and tint level. You can even drag your finger around your wallpaper to perfectly match the tint of your app icons to a color from the background. It's a great way to really personalize your layout. But the newest addition is clear. This gives your app tiles that translucent liquid glass effect that fits right in with the rest of iOS 26. You can choose between a light version, a dark version, or set it to auto to switch based on the time of day. So you've got more control than ever over the look and feel of your home screen. So there you go, that's customization in iOS 26. As you can see, there are some really exciting opportunities here to make your iPhone feel more personal and tailored to you. What about you? Have you had a chance to play around with the customization tools in iOS 26 yet? If so, what do you think? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.